Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, and this is going to be part two of the ships flying away. So this is what we have so far. So what I'm going to do now is add a rocket engine to the ship. So what I'm going to do is make sure our editor settings so things can snap to the drive line. I'm going to ungroup these ships. Grouped them together yesterday. Snap that to the drive line. Snap that to the drive line. All right. Okay. So now what we need is a rocket engine. So let's go to effects, technology, rocket flame. Okay. So I'm just going to make them shooting straight back. And one thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to turn off the light because we're going to have a lot of these and if you're using lights in your uh, lights for scenery you don't want these conflicting with it and telling you it can't render the lights and stuff so copy these place them so you can still get to the tiles because we're going to need to uh, select them because we're going to turn down the alpha and we're going to turn down the variation so it looks like they gas it pretty much. Okay, so first you need a data source. You need a variable data source. And that's going to be our alpha. So for now we're going to set it to 30. So it's 30% of normal. So you'll be uh, it'll kind of be idling through the hangar mothership. So okay so that's 30 so now select the four rocket flames go to particle settings alpha select value object and make it that variable okay so you see it's down a lot so now what we want to do is we want to make it so when you gas it, it looks like you gassed it so first we're going to use variation event And then we're going to use a set value event. Now, set value is going to change the value of this variable to 100, so it'll be 100% instead of 30%. So we just set this to 100, and then uh, the event target is going to be the variable. Okay, and now the variation. We select the target, which will be these four rocket engines. Now with these, with the variation event, it gives you the variations after you select an object. So now see it gives us three, which is what it has. Okay, so to trigger this, we're going to go from this on event up here. Because when it turns on the motors, we want to make it look like they gassed it. So we're going to set the value to 100. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we're going to change the variation to 3. And then it's going to go back to the delay that it was going to in the first place. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to glue these rocket engines to the ship. So we select glue members. Alright, so now let's test it. Nice. Okay, so that's what we want. Okay, so we don't want to have to do it for all of those. So what we're going to do is just copy that one. I'm going to show you how to align it to the grid. So we go to editor settings, turn on X, Y, and Z snap, and then take the grid and align it to that object there. Okay, so now when we make a copy of the ship, when we hit R3, it's going to align it to 4 meter increments. So we can just bring it over, and it'll align it every time. Oops. I think that one got tilted. 
That one looks like it got tilted too. All right. So you see it snaps to four meters and then four more meters. Hello. Please leave a message. <laughs> and I got a phone call. All right. Nobody leaves a message. Okay. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cook, hook up the object position events that got unhooked. I'm going to take those. You can just click on the ship because it's one big giant glued object. So the event target is the ship. Oops. I have those glued together. Should have gone up. All right. Okay. So now you see the alpha is still hooked up, but the hold on, big city. There's a fire somewhere. It's busy tonight. Phone calls, fire trucks. All right. So now the variation got disconnected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect those. To these they didn't get disconnected they just didn't stay connected to the copy so luckily the alpha did but all we have to do is click on these so let's just go, go across and select all these to make sure their variations change also So now let's test them. They all gas it and take off. Okay, so that's what we want. So now what I want to do is I want to group all these together, all these programming things, these new things. Yesterday we grouped all these together, so we want to group the the new ones, which were these and those. Make sure all that's selected, everything but one. Okay. So now that's all grouped. So now let's group that. And now we'll group these ships. One thing you could do, if you don't move the right stick and you just move the left stick, when you go over a glued object, it'll select the whole object immediately. And you don't have to wait for it to select the whole thing. It'll just select it. All of it. So that's a little tip for you. Make sure that worked. Yep, that worked. Okay, so just making sure. So just move with the left stick. When it gets over top, it just hit the X, it selects everything. Okay, so now let's group those. Okay, so now I'll show you what I don't like about this grid. Um, I'm assuming it's because I'm I'm going to be copying everything at once, but I'll copy these ships and copy this programming stuff. Now, when I make a copy of this. And then bring it back and snap it. It doesn't snap to where the front row is, the first row of ships. It snaps to a different part. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do three more rows of these and snap these together. Okay. All right. So. snap these and they just snap they're still snapping to the grid but they're not uh, okay I think that's right okay so now you see these are not the same height these are higher so I'm assuming it's because these were ships were snapped to the grid and I copied the programming and the ships so I'm just going to go and delete this first row. So now these other rows are completely aligned and will all line up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off 
the interval trigger because see right now everything launches when you play everybody goes so we don't want that we want them to kind of move up and go one at a time so we're going to turn off these interval triggers that we have just delete them because we're going to you're going to be coming in and just turn it on for that on event okay so now we still have the first row taken off which is going to be fired by whatever you have uh, area trigger or whatever but right now we're using this interval trigger here okay so now to move these we need to figure out how far to move them and um, well that's it just how far to move them so and how long you want to take to move them so we're going to use an object position event an impulse trigger and a curved data source curved data source is going to be an interval of four so I'm going to say 40 maybe okay so it's going to be the z-axis the z-axis is the straight ahead for the ships so we're going to go on the z-axis we're not going to rotate we're going to select this first row of ships All right, and then our interval trigger is going to be one. It's going to go to the object position event. Now let's turn this off for now and see how far we need to go to, to line it up. So we're turn this off. So those aren't going to move, and these are just going to move up. Okay, so that goes definitely way too far. Okay, I'm sorry. This is what we should have set to 40. And the duration is 60. So let's see. No, that's not quite far enough. Let's try 44. Like I said, it's an interval of 4 because we set that in the... See right here in editor settings. You set snap distance is 4 meters. And we snap to the plane. So, yeah, see that's perfect. So that goes up and aligns perfectly with those. So it gets ready to be launched again. Okay, so what we're going to do is use state events to turn these on and off. So state events. And you'll just do this for the other rows. You'll just add 44 to each row's length to get it up to the front. And then we'll, uh, and then you'll launch it and just use your the timing just double the timing for the next row this is going to be 60 because it takes 60 to get up there we can make this take longer let's go like 90 okay so then we need a delay event delay filter I always say that and then this is going to turn these off because they have to be turned off because what's going to happen is it's going to move something and then if you're if you don't turn off what you're moving before you start trying to move something else then it just will not work so okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to use a impulse splitter here and I'm going to have this hit the impulse splitter interval trigger hit the impulse splitter and then split it off so we can start everything at once so we start those sorry I didn't mean to do that and start over okay hit the interval splitter impulse splitter start there and start there Okay, you could delay that if you wanted to, but this is going to take 90. This is going to start. Okay, so now let's turn this on. Okay, so the first row should fly away. The second row should fly up and then fly away. Okay. Forgot to hook it up. Okay, so after it turns it off, then it doesn't need to turn on the other one. So we're going to go over here and turn this on there okay so now the first row should fly away and the second row should fly up and then fly away yeah 
So cool. Okay, so that's how you do it. You can do it, you know, the next row, you just add double the time and double the length to get the second row up to the first row and the third row. So they just take off like that. All right, so I hope that helps you. I hope everybody had a good time. And thanks for watching.